Okay, so this is uh, a video on the use of Raptor by creating loops. Now, if you remember from class, loops are a way of doing something more than once. So you're going to basically loop around something. So you're looping around something means you're going to go over and over and over it. And there are two types of loops, remember, that you need to think about at the moment. Sort of uh, loops that know in advance how many times that you're going to go around. And that's called a for loop. And while loops, which are sort of indefinite. You don't know when they're definitely going to end. So perhaps a while loop might depend on a certain value that's being typed in. Um, or in programming, some sort of event happening. For example, a user clicking on a button or something like that. You're not quite sure when it's going to happen. So we're going to start off by just looking at the more definite type of looping. So where we know how many times we want to do something. So let's say we're going to do the simplest of loops to start with, which is looping around, let's say, 10 times. OK, so we want to create a loop that prints 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. OK? Right, so the first thing we're going to do is to think about a, a, a loop here. So here we have the loop uh, idea. So we select loop and we plot one in here. And you'll notice that there is an output from the loop, a yes and a no. This is sort of a little bit like a true being yes and a false being no. So inside this loop, the way that we escape from the loop is by whatever is inside this decision being true. So if we want to count from 1 to 10, then it's going to be something to do with some sort of counting variable inside here that has reached 10. And if it's reached 10, we want to end. So what do we want to do inside the loop? Well, we want to be able to print out a number that is going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. In other words, it's going to start off at a certain value. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this value that we call perhaps counter. And it's going to start off at the beginning value, which is 1. So we're going to create an assignment and double click. And we're going to set a variable. Let's call it counter. And we're going to set it to 1 initially. OK, so counter is going to start at 1. And it's going to increase 1 by 1 by 1 round this loop until it's reached that 10. And as soon as it's reached the 10, we're going to come out of the loop and finish. Right, so in other words, we're going to double click on this decision. Remember, it's going to escape the loop once we have got to 10. So we're going to say uh, counter is equal to 10. If counter has got to 10, we've finished. So before we make that decision, we want to output the value of the counter. So we're going to take an output and we're going to put it here in between the loop and the counter equals 10. And we're going to output the value of counter. So we're just going to write here, counter. Okay, so let's see what happens. Basically, it's going to start here, set counter to 1, output counter. So that's going to output the 1 over to this console. And then it's going to say, is counter 10? Well, no, it's 1. So it's going to say no, and it's going to go round. But at the moment, you can see here, it's always going to put the counter value of 1, because there's nowhere in this loop that's increasing that value of counter. So what we need to do is once we've got round here, before we come around the loop again, we want to make counter one bigger than it was before. So we have an assignment, and we're going to set that value of counter to whatever it was before, which is counter, and we're going to add one to it. Okay. Counter will be set to whatever it was before plus one. So the first time round, it's going to set counter to one plus one, which is two. Then it's going to come round. Counter is not 10, so it's going to come here and then set counter to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And just before it decides whether it's going to end or not, it's going to output the value of counter. So let's try this out and see what it does. Now, you can do that either by pressing play or you can step. And stepping through is a way of doing one of these symbols at a time. So let's press the step button. 
So go to start, it always begins at start, remember, and then the next one is going to set counter equal to uh, one. And you can see here, down here, this is the watch window. This is where we can watch the values of the variables as they change. So counter is now one, comes to the loop, and then it's got to go down here this way. Look at the arrow. We can't go this way, that's against the arrow. So down here, and we put the counter. In other words, we output the value of counter. So press the step button. And as we put the value of counter, you can see over here on the console, yes, indeed, we've got the value of one out here. Then it says, is counter equal to 10? Well, quite clearly it's not, it's one. So it comes down here and sets the counter to one plus one, which is now two. So counter now goes to two, it outputs the counter. There it is. Is counter now 10? No, down and round. And it's gonna keep going round for five, put counter six, put seven, eight, nine. Now our counter is 10. It puts the counter out, the value of 10. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 10. And now it says, is counter equal to 10? Yes, it is. So it's gonna come this way out here and then end. Let's just check that, click the step button. Yes, it does, ends. So that is the simplest of counters, a way of incre increasing this counter one by one by one each time until we get to a certain amount. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change this slightly. What happens if we don't want to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, but we want to go from 1 up to 100, say? Well, we could just change this value of 10 by double-clicking here. Double-click that, and we could change that to 100. All right, and then if we just run that, it's going to go around. I'm going to speed this up a bit. You can see it's going to go around 100 times. 1, 2, 3, and now speed it right up. Off it goes, 20, 25, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. There we go, and finished. But perhaps instead, instead of going from one to 100, maybe we want to go from one to some value that somebody inputs. In other words, you ask somebody, what value do you want to go to? And they say 33. So we're gonna get that from the user. So instead of this assignment, uh, instead of this, this value going to 100 here, we're going to get that value from a user. So we're going to use an input, and before the loop starts, we're going to ask, uh, what's the biggest number? Where shall we count to, in other words? Where shall we count to starting from 1? Okay, we're going to put that into a variable. So what should we call that? Let's call that... Um, largest value, largest value. Uh, ooh, what have I done here? Oh, I'll put this question mark outside of the quotes. Can you see that? It should be inside the quotes. It's inside that string there. Here we go. So we've now got this variable called largest value. Remember when we get inputs, this is the prompt. This is the variable that we're gonna store whatever was typed into. So instead of this being 100, I'm mean, just gonna be largest value. Okay, so off we go. Let's run this again. Let's start, and let's say we want uh, 45. Off it goes, goes round, and this time it's going to go all the way up to 45. It's going around this loop bit by bit by bit, and there it is, up to 45. Okay, 